Okay, another great question. For ortho K fitting, is it better to have the patient look straight ahead and center the scans on the pupil or look slightly to the left or right so the scans are centered on the cornea? And I'm a real stickler about having both a visual axis capture and a geometric axis capture as we discussed earlier, specifically for orthokeratology. So really important questions. Now, as you know, when you capture your topography, it's along the line of sight, the visual axis, if the patient is looking right down the center of the unit. And that decenters the placido reflection to the nasal side and gives us a topography that appears with a little more blue on one side, a little less on the other side. Our topography is decentered on the cornea more toward the nasal side. One of my mentors, John Mountford, says, you need this topography. This is important to understand what the patient is actually looking through, um, what powers are distributed within the pupil along their line of sight, and also what changes do we make in orthokeratology post-wear so that we can understand um, what the patient is looking through. So the visual axis capture is important. As I mentioned earlier, what I do is take two captures on the visual axis, patient looking right down the axis of the instrument on the center ring. Then I'll take a couple captures with the patient fixated a few rings toward the nose, um, a few rings to move that placido more on to the geometric center. So as soon as I see the placido rings appearing centered to the visible iris, then I'm going to snap that photo. And you can really see the decentration with these rings around the placido. The visual axis captured rings are definitely skewed more toward the nasal side. When we ask our patient to look a few rings in toward their nose, it could be one, two, or three, then we can see we can center that placido reflection and understand the eye relative to the geometric center. So is there natural eye displacement? That's what you learn from the geometric capture. Now, how do you take these two captures? Very simple. For the visual axis, we're going to have the patient look right down the axis of the instrument on that center ring. For the geometric capture, what you're going to do is have the patient fixate not right down the center, but one, two, three, maybe even four rings, depends on how high their angle uh, alpha is. But <clears throat> we're going to have the patient looking in until we can see that the placido is well centered to the visible iris. So it's not that difficult to do. Um, either visual axis right down the axis of the instrument, or if you're taking a right eye, I'm having the patient look in toward their nose so that I'm taking out that temporally displaced fovea, moving the placido reflection more onto the geometric axis of the eye. Now here you can see in the visual axis capture, if I draw a circle around this green yellow border where I think I'm going to find symmetric eye shape, um, that looks like it's pulled a little bit temporal on this nasal eye. And that's because our topography is decentered off to the nasal axis. But um, if you do a geometric capture, now we've centered the topography laterally Notice there's about equal iris visible on this side as there is on this side. But when we draw our circle around that green yellow border where our ortho K lens will touch down or our rigid contact lens will touch down, where is it going to find its equilibrium? And that's that green yellow border um, where it finds the closest matching shape um, on the eye surface to the lens surface. So if you have a symmetric lens as an example, it's going to find the closest symmetric shape that it can. And that's going to be this green yellow border. And it looks to me like the black dotted circle is a little bit more nasal um, than our topography is. So therefore we might expect our ortho K lens to want to decenter a little bit more to the nasal side. So this is the benefit 
of doing these different captures. Visual axis is for understanding the powers the patient is looking through. The geometric capture will tell you where the lens is likely to want to center. Now, I had suggested earlier I do something called the advanced composite, where I take a bunch of images, the two on the visual axis, two on the geometric, and then to build my composite, then I'm going to have one capture in each of the principal directions. So I'm not using the composite wizard, I'm using the manual composite capture. And um, that's something you can do with any of your captures. So if you want to take 20 maps on a particular eye and merge them all together to create an average, um, then you can, you can do that. And that might be helpful on patients where reproducibility is a problem. You're trying to find that median or that average eye shape Taking more images and just averaging them, them out using the composite might be a tool to help you to get um, the accurate starting topography for building your lens. So this advanced composite is something I do on all baseline uh, topographies where I'm about to start ortho K as an example, or I'm building a corneal GP lens, maybe a multifocal GP or single vision, doesn't matter, anything specialty contact lens oriented. I wanna have more images. I wanna have lots and lots and lots, especially before we've altered eye shape. If it's your baseline ortho K topography, that's your most important map that determines the initial parameters you're going to use. It's the subtractive map um, that you're always going to reference back to the baseline capture. Super critical. If we're building a specialty contact lens um, that might take days or weeks to get the lens, we want that first lens to be as accurate as we possibly can. Increase our first fit success. So. Uh, more maps are just better in my mind. So just as a summary, you have your visual axis capture, which explains what the patient is looking through. That's your understanding of the vision, the powers that are entering the pupil relative to the visual axis. The geometric capture will tell you if the eye shows some natural displacement, nasal, temporal, superior, inferior, where is the rigid contact lens likely to want to decenter. The composite should be used for your building of the contact lens. Um, it should be used for your subtractive map analysis. So take lots of maps. That's basically my recommendation. 